Hello and welcome back to this 16th video in the series Dynamic Segmentation Inside Out. In this video I will cover how multicast traffic is handled with dynamic segmentation. If you want or need to know more about dynamic segmentation with Aruba Networks, check out the playlist that contains tons of information about dynamic segmentation. So right, let's talk multicast. Imagine the following situation where you have a couple of end devices that want to communicate using multicast. Each device has its own tunnel with user-based tunneling. So each tunnel will transport its own multicast, unicast and broadcast packets. And in this scenario, we can distinguish traffic going from the tunnel devices, so from the clients up to the mobility controller and traffic coming down from the mobility controller to the tunnel devices. Let's first check out the upstream traffic, so traffic from the tunneled devices. Multicast traffic coming from the tunnel devices always use the dedicated tunnels. So in other words, a multicast coming from client one always uses the dedicated tunnel of client one. Client five always uses the dedicated tunnel of client five. So this is really very straightforward and it is also very secure because each client is completely isolated from the other clients. The downstream traffic behavior is slightly different. When a multicast uh, packet is received by the mobility controller, the mobility controller performs head-end replication. In other words, the mobility controller processes the packet. The mobility controller makes a change to the packet it changes the destination MAC address, which is the MAC address of the client from a multicast MAC address to a unicast MAC address of the client. And the destination IP address remains unchanged. So normally in multicast environments, the MAC address is derived from the multicast IP address. Now with head end replication, the mobility controller changes that MAC address. If you don't get this, no worries, in the demonstration later on in the video it will all be clear. So the same applies for the downstream traffic as for the upstream traffic. Packets for each client are completely isolated, ensuring the maximum possible control and security. Now let's have a look at the following three scenarios that I will demonstrate. In the first scenario, I will show you a standard multicast stream between a transmitter and a receiver without using user-based tunneling. I will show you a trace that contains the multicast traffic. What you will see in there is the multicast IP and multicast MAC address. In the second scenario, I have a transmitter sitting on the underlay network. So that transmitter is not using a tunnel. And there is a receiver that is connected to the mobility controller with user-based tunneling. In this scenario, I will also show you a network trace and prove that the MAC address of the receiver has changed from a multicast MAC address to a unicast MAC address. And in the third scenario, I will show you two tunneled devices, one multicast transmitter and one multicast receiver. And also showing the trace with the converted MAC addresses. Each scenario requires some reconfiguration of the clients and ports. Uh, that's because of the authentication function that will be used with user-based tunneling. And I will skip that reconfiguration because I've already, I've already demonstrated the configuration of user-based tunneling at large in earlier videos. Okay, first scenario. Let me first show you the switch configuration. Both clients are connected to a port that is a member of VLAN 120 and each client is on a different switch and both switches are connected with a trunk link uh, allowing VLAN 120. Uh, I've got IGP snooping configured. Uh, let me show you that configuration running on VLAN 120. Uh, also on the other one. And... Um, I can also show you the status of IGMP for VLAN 120. So you can see that it's all up and running. Um, I've got two clients, a transmitter and a receiver. So this one will be the 
server so that one will be the transmitter and the other laptop will be the receiver let me start the transmitter and move to the receiver um, and start the trace first and then start the receiver so you can see some igmp joins looking for any sources so that's like generic generic queries um, okay so let me start that one i get a join uh, message and then you can see the multicast stream coming in okay let me stop that one you can see the leave messages there let me also stop the trace and then i'm gonna check out one of the multicast packets so let's get that one you can see that the destination ip address is 234.5.6.7 and so when i check the multicast address it is 01005e so these are the that's the oui so the first three bytes of the mac address um, so when the first byte is 01 01 identifies a multicast uh, mac address so this is basically a multicast mac address 5.6.7 is derived from the uh, multicast group so that's the last three bytes of the multicast group so you can see that this is a multicast address when i check out the client um, here so that's the mac address of the client which is a totally different uh, different mac address altogether okay um, just for the sake of checking the switch let me just run that uh, receiver again and see what's happening on the switches um, show igmp and you can see that we've got some uh, active groups here 234.5.6.7 also on the other switch so this is really normal behavior for multicast and it should work that way for the second scenario, I have configured the switch for user-based tunneling and the receiver is now moved to a port that is enabled for user-based tunneling. So that port has 802.1x enabled and that tunnel is established. Uh, so before I uh, start the testing again, let me just show you that tunnel user there. Uh, you can see that the tunnel is established to uh, one of the mobility controllers, uh, 157. And um, so that's the IP address, which is an IP address in VLAN 120. Okay, let's put it to the test again. You can see the transmitter, so the server is still running. And let me move to the receiver. Let's start the Wireshark and let's start the receiver. Okay, some packets coming in. Let's stop it again and stop the trace. Uh, okay, uh, let's check out one of the uh, multicast packets. You can see that the destination is still the multicast uh, IP address 234.5.6.7. .6 That's cool. That's good. And let's check out the MAC address. So the MAC address is here, 2C59E503D24F. Now, that's not a multicast address. This is the MAC address, actually, from the client. So this is the Ethernet adapter, 2C59E503D24F. So what that means is, is that the mobility controller performs that head end replication. So it converts the multicast MAC address to the unicast MAC address and just unicasts that packet back to the client. Now for the third scenario, I have configured the port that connects to the multicast transmitter for a user-based tunneling, and that client has now been authenticated. Uh, let me show you the tunnel users here. Uh, you can see that I've got two tunnel users now. One is connected to the 251 and the other is connected to the to the other switch. 
Um, and so let me move to the transmitter and receiver. You've got the transmitter here. You can see that the transmitter is transmitting and um, the receiver is stopped. Let me start a trace first and then start the receiver. And the receiver is receiving packets again. Stop the multicast receiver and the trace. And let's check out one of the multicast packets. Again, you can see 234.5.6.7 as destination IP address. And the source MAC address is still the unicast uh, the unicast MAC address instead of the multicast MAC address. So nothing changes there. Now also let me check the upstream uh, packet. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a trace here. So this is a transmitter. Okay, so you can see that the transmitter is transmitting packets and so so this is the upstream so this is a uh, traffic going from the transmitter up to the mobility controller so i should see the multicast mac address and i should see the multicast ip address and as you can see in the trace here so that's your destination mac address 01005e so that's multicast going up to the mobility controller and you can see the destination IP address is the multicast IP address, 234.5.6.7. Um, so that's really, you know, the way it, uh, it should work, I guess. And that's cool stuff. And this concludes yet another video in the series Dynamic Segmentation Inside Out. Let us know if you have any questions or suggestions for videos. Uh, feedback is very welcome. And of course, a thumbs up is very much appreciated. Finally, subscribing to this channel doesn't cost you a thing and you can ensure that you are up to date with all the great stuff that is coming to you from Aruba Networks. Thanks and bye bye.